Hi there, welcome to BoxPred. In this video, I'm going to be giving my prediction on the January the 29th fight between Timothy Bradley and Devon Alexander. Um, this is uh, basically for the WBC and WBO light welterweight titles. Um, however, if Timothy Bradley wins this fight, then the WBC portion of the title uh, will become vacant. Okay, so my prediction for this fight is a victory for Timothy Bradley by decision. First of all, I'd just like to mention that um, I did mention in my 2010 recap video towards the end um, that there was sort of an unofficial tournament um, developing between four of the best fighters in the uh, light welter division, and they are the two fighters in question in this video, Timothy Bradley, Devin Alexander, and also two other fighters who have recently fought, Amir Khan and Marcos Maidana. Amir Khan and Marcos Maidana put on a great spectacle, it was a great fight, it was a close fight, um, however Amir Khan was victorious by decision, 12 round decision, <clears throat> and the good thing, the thing I was really happy about with that fight is the two guys came together and put their, you know, took risks to fight each other. And t they're taking on the best, but ne neither Korea was damaged too much by that fight. I mean, you know, Amir Khan, obviously winning the fight, his Korea takes another positive step. However, Marcus Maidana put up such a great fight and um, was such a warrior during the fight that, um, as they both were, that even though he lost the fight, it's not too damaging to his Korea, and he is still up there with the best and he can still have big fights which I'm really pleased about and I, I kind of am hoping that this fight ends in a similar fashion um, where both fighters are able to carry on and um, keep us excited with this division um, <clears throat> because I think boxers have a misconception that we as boxing fans um, really care so much about them having a, a zero on their loss column I mean, just because a fighter loses doesn't make them, you know, it's not the end of the world. They need, I think boxers need to understand that we would rather them fight the best and go up against the best rather than just have a protected career. Um, and I think it matters a lot more that who you fight rather than what, you know, having a couple of losses on your record. <clears throat> um, so in this fight, someone's O has to go. But does it? It could be a draw. It's, um, it could happen. You don't. You never know. Um, however, I've gone for Timothy Bradley by decision. So, quickly looking at their um, records, we've got two unbeaten fighters. Uh, we've got Devin Alexander, who is 21 uh, victories with no losses, no draws, and he has a 62% uh, knockout ratio. And Timothy Bradley, who is 26 fights, uh, five fights more. Also with no losses, no draws, but only with a 40% knockout ratio. So, and the thing I wanted to sort of highlight in this one is that um, I'm not going to rule either fighter out because they're both skilled fighters and they both have a puncher's chance. Um, Devin Alexander in particular, I think, could try for the knockout in this one because um, Timothy Bradley can get caught. He, I, as you'll come to find out during this video, I think Timothy Bradley is a very highly skilled fighter. I think he's the more skilled of the two fighters, and I think that's what's going to win him this fight. However, he is susceptible to being caught, and I'll go into that a bit later. So, um, <clears throat> but just talking about Devin Alexander, um, although he could win this by decision because he's got the skill um, and he's beaten others by decision, by decision, um, I think he's. His most likely victory is, um, not most likely, but he, he, the knockout is more available for him, I feel. Um, and <clears throat> basically, I find, uh, I've watched him, and it seems to me that he, he fights, in a couple of fights I've watched him, he's fought back and off. Um, he seems to be willing to let his opponent impose themselves on him. And I think that put, he puts himself under unnecessary pressure. And I'm not totally convinced by Devin Alexander's defence um, when ba either. So when, when he's fighting back and off, I'm a bit uncomfortable with him <clears throat> fighting that way. 
Um, and I feel he needs to be able to, st in this fight, to stand more, more, more chance. He needs to be able to, he needs to learn to stand his ground to impose himself on Timothy Bradley, to not back off all the time and become, um, <clears throat> be too negative in the fight. I think he'll put himself under too much, under more pressure than is necessary then, and that will reduce his chances. <clears throat> um, I think the jab could be important for Devin Alexander, um, but I don't think he's got a good enough jab. I think it's a little bit sloppy. Um, if you watch him against Andre and just kind of Katelnik, um, I don't think he was he connects very sharply with the jab. Um, he sort of um, fl not flicks it, but it's a bit weak. Um, his wrist is a bit weak in that respect, in my opinion. Um, and also, he's shown stamina issues, and I think the longer the fight goes on, um, the more it will suit Timothy Bradley, because I think Timothy Bradley's the more composed of the two fighters, and I think Devin Alexander may struggle as the fight goes on, stamina-wise. think against Uran, Uran, Urango, um, he was... Um, he was he I, I wasn't that impressed with him in that fight or the Katelnik fight, and um, I think he sort of struggled stamina wise as those fights went on. Um, but the thing is, he's never been down, um, which is in contrast to his opponent Timothy Bradley has been down, <clears throat> been knocked down before. Um, Devin Alexander, it's just a question of whether. That's a good thing or a bad thing. It depends how you look at it. You could say that he's never been down because he's that good. He's never been knocked down, you know. So he's never been caught, or being or no one's ever got to him enough. Um, however, you could look at it and say he's been untested. So if he is knocked down in this fight, how will he respond? <coughs> how will he respond to being knocked down? Um, will he fall apart or will he become stronger? That remains to be seen. It may happen in this fight, it may not, but that's a question mark over Devin Alexander for me. Um, and finally, just uh, wanted to point out, he doesn't seem to have a plan B. Um, when things are going badly for Devin Alexander, he seems to just stick to the same game plan. And I think great fighters are able to switch up the game plan and to adjust, adapt and adjust. He's not that adaptable for me. Um, and while Devin Alexander, I don't mean to be too negative and, or biased in this video, I'm just giving my reasons why I don't think he's going to win the fight. Um, he's a skilled fighter, uh, I have respect for Devin Alexander, and he's dangerous in his own right. Um, because he has got some knockout power, and he does pose a threat to Timothy Bradley in that respect. But I think um, Timothy Bradley, who I'm going to talk about now... Um, is a bit is is going to come down to skill at the end of the day. I think that both fighters are. It's come, neither is a real knockout artist, so it's going to come down to, for me to more skill than anything. And although Bradley does have a chance of knocking Devin Alexander out, like in any fight match, any boxer really has. Um, he has been known to not really have one punch power knockout power. Timothy Bradley. He's more of a. He's he's more of a you know. Um, he he'll punch you with quite a good volume, and he he can keep the volume up. Um, throughout the fight to make sure that he looks good to the judges and one thing about Timothy Bradley is what he's brought from his amateur days is that he throws amateur style flurries and when I say amateur I don't mean as in amateur as in poor um, I mean as in um, some some that's a type of skill that he, a skill that he's merged from his amateur days into his pro boxing career he's able to throw flurries another boxer who does this is Amir Khan okay they throw, who who also is an amateur Olympic champion, um, they throw quick flurries that look very good to the judges. Now, they may not do that, that much damage, but they're racking up the points. And this is why I feel Bradley's going to get this on points, because he can, he's very good at throwing flurries and he and racking up those points. Um, another thing, um, I, th I feel Bradley is um, the, the cleverer boxer. Um, he's got the better boxing brain. I feel he's more composed. If you watch his fight against Kendall Holt in the first round, um, Timothy Bradley was knocked down, and it looked like quite a bad knockdown. Okay, he was a bit of a flash knockdown, but it looked pretty bad. Um, however, Timothy Bradley had showed great composure. This is the type of composure that even you know people like Ricky Hatton um, 
and many others who are you know are very experienced fighters you know 30 plus fights 40 plus fights don't they they get knocked down they've got up and they're all over the place and they tell the referee yeah i can carry on you know and next thing you know they're back down again because they're not composed and they didn't give themselves time to recover timothy bradley got knocked down in the first round bit of a shock for him he got up but then he took a kneel he took a knee and he took um the man to he took the count um and he composed himself and what i saw on his face during those times he was down um taking the knee was sheer composure and sheer determination and he was not naive although he may have felt he could get back up and fight on straight away i think he was telling himself no sometimes the effect of a punch is delayed so you may think you're okay, but then you start fighting again and your brain is all over the place. You don't know what's going on. Next thing you know, you're down again. You can't defend yourself and you end up losing that fight. He was aware enough and conscious enough and clever enough to know he knows what he's doing. He chose to take the time to compose himself, to give himself that little bit of time. It's a matter of seconds that can make a difference. What happened? He got back up, he was composed and he fought on. He started fighting on just like he had never gone down continued to, to the same um way he'd been fighting and he went on and took that fight um so one thing he's shown in that fight as well and one thing he's shown he's shown to me in other fights is that he doesn't mind fighting going forward in contrast to devon alexander who fights a bit negatively for me going backwards um timothy bradley imposes himself on his opponent and he's and he's not afraid he's very courageous um that might be seen as a weakness um to get him um knocked down but he is skilled at the same time, so he doesn't just rush in there. I'm not on about him just rushing in there, like Ricky Hatton coming in, um, you know, who came and stuck against the better fighters, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, when he came rushing in. Um, then I, uh, Timothy Bradley, um, can t- he can control the fight going forward. Um, and I, th- I feel he can fight going backwards as well, which is a main, a good trait to have. You need to be able to do that. But I feel that he can take this fight to Devin Alexander and put Devin Alexander under, under the necessary pressure um, to really pressurise him um, and to take the points and possibly look for the KO. Um, <clears throat> Timothy Radley's got good head movement, very good head movement, actually. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't think the, you know, I think Alexander's going to have a hard time getting to him, especially with the jab that he has. It's not very the strongest jab in the world to get um, <clears throat> to land it on Timothy Bradley and to try and slow him down and keep him away, keep him off of him. Um, uh, and <clears throat> another thing, though, you've seen in the Kendall Holt fight is that uh, Timothy Bradley can get caught. He can, you know, especially coming on the inside, he can, you know, if you catch him. Um, if you catch him right, you can go. You can get him and can go down, and that's a risk um, for Timothy Bradley in this one. Devin Alexander does have the skills to get to knock him down. Um, <clears throat> but if you look at their last two fights, I mean, I, th- I feel Timothy Bradley's had the, the stronger of the last two fights. He's uh, <clears throat> beaten Lamont uh, Peterson and Abregu, and uh, Devin Alexander's looked. He hasn't looked so so as convincing in his. Um, he has um, faced Durango and Katelnik, and um, he hasn't been convincing that convincing for me. Um, but that's how I think it's going to go. I think it's going to be come down to skill at the end of the day. I think Timothy Bradley's just going to have a bit too much ring savvy and cleverness and boxing ability for Devin Alexander. And um, I'm going for Timothy Bradley by unanimous decision. Um, thank you for watching my video. Um, please let me know your views on the fight, your opinions in uh, the comment on this page or on my home page and if you do like my videos please do subscribe i very much appreciate you watching my video um this is boxpred i'm out